Hello and welcome to The Bike Show and this week we are mainly coming from Pussy's Bikers Warehouse here in North Riding which is appropriate because they are a Husqvarna dealer and later on we'll be talking about the new Svart Peelen 701 Husqvarna. But first, this man here has been to France to visit what looks like an Art Deco art gallery but which is in fact a motorcycle factory. Inside this simple Art Deco building is Boxer, a motorcycle design company. And there's a factory for quite possibly the most lovely limited edition bikes on sale today. Bruff Superior was regarded as the Rolls Royce of motorbikes in its heyday before the Second World War and now it has been reborn here in Toulouse in the southwest of France. This is the Genesis. It's where it all began. It's sporting model number 001, although it's not a production version. It's actually a prototype that was used, taken around to all the major exhibitions in Europe to generate orders. As such, there's actually no internals in the engine and the front suspension system, which you can see is very much like the Hossack or Duo lever on the BMW, uh, now being patented by Boxer or Bruff Superior. It's their own design, their own tweaks on it, but uh, it's a bit loose around the headstock. Absolutely beautiful and enough to make people put money down for orders, even though it wasn't a working example. And now, interestingly, Bruff Superior reckon about a third to 40% of buyers are never going to use the bikes. It's an investment for them. So what they actually ask is, can they have the case as well as the bike, and then it will just stand next to their classic car collection and be admired. And I have to say, much as I love bikes that are ridden, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It really is a piece of engineering art. Bruff managed in the beginning to get itself a load of really impressive speed records. And you can see the streamlining happening here. Get the perfect teardrop shape on the back, streamlining around the engine and at the front. I'm tempted to say the rider's got a bit of a teardrop shape to him as well. But what I think borderline upsets me is that really a helmet? Could have done some work on that. Absolutely love the open nature of this. Well, it's a factory, but it kind of feels more like a surgery. There's just two guys working up here, and this area is where they're assembling the engine. Now, you must remember that everything's designed in-house. Now, they do use some of the world's top suppliers. For example, we've got the injection system here, which is supplied by Continental. Uh, but it doesn't escape the tweak and design input of Bruff because the coupling between the two injector bodies is made and machined here. And in the background you can see the guys are actually seating some valves I think at the moment and on the other workstation they're actually assembling the whole engine. By hand remember, everything by hand. When Bruffs were originally manufactured in Nottingham, England, the attention to detail was legendary. It's exactly the same now. Everyone here is a skilled craftsman and the attention to detail would make even NASA look like a bit of a slapdash outfit. Bruff Superior was obviously in the beginning an icon for British, English engineering, but no longer, it's an icon for the French now. French lubricants? French tyres with Michelin. In fact, there's just examples of top quality, high-end French engineering absolutely everywhere. You want an example of attention to detail? Well, everything on the Bruff Superior is polished by hand. This gentleman behind me is not a technician, he's an artist. The welding he's doing on the moment is on the tanks, but here I have some of his other work. This is a very light eight kilo frame. You can see it's very thin, and that leaves more room for the air box and the gas tank. But what you need to have a really close look at is the welding. I've never seen anything like it. It's beautiful. Petrol tanks, now in the beginning, they were hand beaten, such was the craftsmanship. But even given the exquisite level of skills on offer, it was difficult to get the length and get any consistency. So, they moved on to this, which is cast. But to maintain the level of artwork involved, 
every bit of the surface has been machined. And it looks even better. Why Toulouse in France? Well, it's a bit like the F1 belt in the UK. In Oxfordshire, there are many, many engineering firms that service the needs of the vast majority of F1 teams that are based there. Well, here in Toulouse, what happens? It's Airbus, isn't it, in the Eurospace industry. And so there are a huge number of top quality, highly professional engineering firms that Brough Superior can deal with. And because they're local, there's a quick turnaround time. You can literally nip in the van, go down to one of the engineering firms and get something made or tweaked really quickly. And that level of detail means that stuff like bolts, now I need to get my specs out for this to see the level of detail involved, are engineered just around the corner from here. And look at them, I mean, who could have thought that a bolt could be beautiful? This is the point where the bikes are really starting to come together and they'll eventually be shipped out to their proud new owners. And it's nice to see here on the line, this is the special 100th anniversary edition, as we now know. Brough Superior is 100 years old, started in 1919. There will only be 100 of these built, and I'm pretty sure they've all been ordered. But if you get lucky enough and you ask, maybe there's one available, I'll only rush you 100,000 euros, about a million and a half left. A lot of money for sure, but this peek behind the scenes leaves me in no doubt that it's money well spent. A Brough Superior is a truly rare modern classic that will, if spec right, be a genuine one-off. Here's an example of the influence of the aircraft industry, Airbus around Toulouse, as we said. This double disc setup at the front is borrowed straight from aircraft design and uh, it allows an extra central pad between the two discs. Apparently the stopping power is absolutely massive, but it also helps out the handling because as you can see, the discs in turn can be much smaller and that's a gyroscopic effect. So smaller discs, easier turning. You are buying a bespoke product, so you can have whatever color you want, including some that have never even been thought of. And apparently, I've seen it with my own eyes, if you want the pinstriping in gold leaf, not a problem, sir. It's not just the skills of the aircraft industry that help out with Brough Superior, it's also MotoGP and F1 specialists that are in France, and the wheels are an example of that. And look at the level of detail and cutting and I just I don't know how to describe it just take a look yourself and that includes the hubs so yes it's a classic design but it's absolutely bang up to date engineering I keep overusing the word detail but it's just everywhere the seat can be finished any way you want whether you want something like that which has got some stripes in it whether you want this kind of plain effect any color you like, apparently some of the guys come in here and they want the leather color to match the color of the leather in one of their classic sport cars, or maybe they want it to match the color of the wife's eyes or mistress's eyes. Have a look at this. The top triple clamp is in itself, once again, an engineering work of art. Steering lock there underneath the delightful little Brough Superior badge. Everything is machined and billet. Look at the switches. A tiniest little bit of plastic. In fact, I'm not even convinced that that would be plastic. The instrument cluster, very classic in design as you would expect, but if I can find that, yes, it does actually have a key in here. We must have a look at the key because oh, you can judge a quality by the key and it's just lovely. But let me turn this on and hopefully it doesn't fire up and go off its side stand. Look at that. So they've just got a tiny little digital screen in there which has got your rev counter and you need a magnifying glass to read it, mind. Oh, it's just utterly beautiful. All billet, all very thin, the clocks and the lights. Wow, the lights are LED. So they've kept the classic look, but again, incorporated some of the most amazing up-to-date technology. It's the way that all the new tech is blended so seamlessly with the classic styling and the sheer level of workmanship and care that has gone into each bike that leaves such a lasting impression. Unfortunately, I'll never have the wherewithal to own one of these beauties, but I'm still very glad that they exist, even if only for the ultimate benefit of motorcycling's new one percenters. 
what an amazing experience. I have to tell you, gents, uh, that factory is like a surgery. It's so clean. It doesn't even feel like a factory when you go in. It's like an enormous man cave. But I know there's a lot of you at home are probably going, million rand, million and a half rand for a bike. That's ridiculous. But it's well, not. No, it's not. It's so totally. You think of HP4 races and Ducati Superleggeras. Same money, 1.3, 1.4 million yeah. rand. And there's a lot more of those knocking around and than it would be a these are truly unique. The engineering on every single detail is amazing. And there must be hundreds and hundreds of man hours gone into every single component and the assembly of it. Easily worth the money. Talk, Easily. Talking of assembly, now, it was a British guy who bought the rights to the name. True. How did it come to be built in France? It's a very good question. And fortunately, <laughs> You've got I an know a man called Albert who knows the answer. So um, he has been in touch with us uh, through uh, a journalist, probably you know Alan Katka, and so he, he was asking about a company able to design a concept bike. And uh, uh, we know Alan for, for, for years, and he, he said, ah, I know a small company in France able to design you uh, a project. So he came just for design. And uh, really rapidly, as we are fond of classic bikes, and we, 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 we have seen from the beginning the potential of uh, Bros Superior making a new bike, uh, we have decided to, uh, under license, start to develop and produce a brand new motorcycle. And uh, recently, in November, last November, we, we bought out the IPs uh, from Bros Superior, uh, and now we own the brand. Well, that was convenient. Um, <laughs> you say they are limited editions. So how, how limited are they? How many do they actually make? That's another good question, and I've got another good answer. <laughs> it's uh, planned this year. It's 120 units. Uh, in the past, we made it's the third year of production. So the first year, we did uh, 63 bikes, uh, 72 this, uh, last year. And uh, if, if I include the presarial bike, at the moment we have about 150 bikes. So you haven't really got the answers. It's actually him who's got the answers and you just asked the question. Or you could actually look at it is that you're so predictable. I've asked these questions long before they got round to it. But go ahead, try right, me out, thanks. try me out. OK, OK. Now, this is now a French bike. Yes. It run, it's built in France by Frenchmen. It runs on French rubber. It's lubricated by French oil. What do the British enthusiasts for Bruff think about this? That their beloved manufacturer has been taken to Frogland? I bet you don't have that answer. Yeah, but he doesn't, eh? First thing, uh, uh, most of the orders at the beginning came from UK. So we, we sold a lot of bikes there. Um, and then we have the, had the visit of the Bruff Superior Club. Uh, they were really gentle and re really reassured by uh, how we are working and you know, how we are paying attention to details and finishing. And uh, from the beginning, you know, we were really um, prudent and uh, respectful uh, to the brand legacy because it was like a dream for us to work on such iconic brand. And um, we have always thought that uh, George Bros himself would be pleased. <sighs> Okay. All right. All right. Great. We know how they're made. They're beautiful. When are you actually going to ride one, though? Yeah, there was not much riding going on in that test. Because there? there was so much to see inside the factory. I think you'll agree. However, I will be riding it, uh, I think, in June. So on, in July sometime, you'll be able to see my report on that. Looking forward to it. Unfortunately, it's just the pressures of the job, but I've got to go back to the south of France to ride it. Oh, dear. But I'll do it. Don't you worry. No, you take one the it. team. Okay. <laughs> Now look, I mean, that guy you're speaking to, Albert, Yeah, say? interesting fellow, isn't he? Very interesting fellow. We do have a full interview with that guy, and if you want to see it, then you have to go to www.thebikeshow.tv. That is our new online subscription channel. The full interview will be up there, and it is very interesting, so I'd recommend you go and have a look. After that, I think we need to go to an ad break. <laughs>